best thing and hardest thing about having a kid? Emily, go. Mm, best thing is finding the joy in the smallest things. Mm. And the hardest thing is learning the hard things about me. <laughs> mm, I like that. That was deep. I thought you were just going to say <laughs> getting them into the car seat. Oh, that's that's part of it. <laughs> For <Okay>. sure. <laughs> and you learn a lot about yourself when you're trying to put a child into a car seat. Precisely. Like I thought I was I thought I was a patient person. Yep. <laughs> Not until I'm trying to get them into a damn car seat. Now things get turned upside down. Yeah. Hey, what's happening, you guys? Welcome back to the Proclivity Podcast. I'm your host, Joel Cochran. I'm here with Emily Rodella, and we have a special guest. I love having special guests, Emily. How about you? Yeah, it's my favorite. The best. And this guest is near and dear to our heart, particularly Emily's heart, because they have almost the same story, and they love their little boys almost exactly. <laughs> and so they're two sisters from different parts of the United States, Crunchy Kate is what she goes by, and she has an incredible story in which she started getting chronically sick while she was pregnant, and everybody shoot her off. It's totally fine. Don't worry about it, but she was going through hell, and she finally took things into her own hands, very similar to what Emily did, and said, fine, it's time to get crunchy. <laughs> And she went holistic and she created a lifestyle that was healthy for herself and for her child. She is now going to be a doctor of naturopathy. I'm excited to have her on here. We're going to dive in today about holistic living, regulating your nervous system. Buckle in, folks. This is going to be a good ride. Crunchy Kate, welcome to the Proclivity Method podcast. I'm so excited. Us too. So for all our moms who do listen to the podcast, give us, I'm very curious in this story of this chronic um, illness or, you know, symptoms that were coming up while you were pregnant. This is when it started manifesting or did it start happening beforehand? Yeah. So I got pregnant in college unexpectedly. Um, so that in itself was like a, you know, a huge um, stressor drama that yeah. happened. Yeah. Um, but I was just, I was finding myself getting more and more anxious. I was really anxious. I kept like hyper fixating, hyper fixating on birth. Obviously, I'd never given birth. So I'm like, I have no idea how to give birth. Like, am I going to die during birth? Like, that was like, my biggest, I think, intrusive thought that I kept having. Mm. And I've always had anxiety, but it was like taken to a new level where like I couldn't stop thinking about it. Um, and it kind of just spiraled one day into where like I had a panic attack thinking about it, but the panic attack just didn't go away. And I didn't understand what was happening. And then I started to get all of these symptoms. It was like a snowball effect almost. Um, and I had no idea that it was my nervous system that became just so dysregulated. Um, so I was like feeling out of body 24 seven. I was having like insane intrusive thoughts. Um, my vision started to get blurry. Um, I was like super tired, couldn't stand for long periods of time, lost a lot of weight. Um, and I like went to my OB with these concerns and they were like, we'll run tests, but like, you look fine. You look totally normal. I'm like, okay, well in here does not feel normal. Mm. Uh, yeah. So like they did like labs and I was just like praying, like, please let something come back to be like, wow. you know, okay, this is our clue to what happened. And they, I remember I got the call and they were like, your labs are totally fine. And I was devastated. I was like, that, that, that like, you guys are wrong. Like there is something so wrong with me. Um, but just nobody could pinpoint it. So they're like, like, we'll give you anxiety medicine if you want. But I was like, I can't, I don't want that. Um, mm. I had taken it in the past. It didn't really work for me. Um, so I was just kind of like left, you know, for just whatever, like you look fine. And if you're functioning, you're fine. Um, 
and then like uh, just uh, more things were happening. Every time I go to the OB, they'd kind of be like, hey, so this is wrong with your son or, you know, he's not growing. Um, or another time they said like, hey, we think he has um, a tumor in his brain. Like we got to send you to this this hospital, you know, an hour away to get checked. And like just more and more trauma kept building. And then my symptoms just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Um, and then like flash forward. I had him still felt so terrible. Um, symptoms just kept getting worse. And it, and like, once he was like a year and a half, it kind of just got to the point where I was like, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Like, it, like I got to find an answer or like, this is it for me. Um, and so I would just like kind of Google like, um, ways to heal without medicine or, um, like just anything I could find because I didn't know of anyone, like everyone I knew, obviously just, you know, go to your doctor, trust your doctor. Um, so like this lifestyle, the holistic lifestyle, I had never heard of it. Um, like, and I wasn't, I would, I'd always like eaten well, but well, mm. but like I had never, you know, this lifestyle was completely new to me. Um, but I started Googling and I found a holistic doctor in my area. And at the same time I was searching in a mom Facebook group and someone had posted her symptoms and had said like, this person really helped me. She helped me with nervous system regulation. And I was like, what? I was like, could that work for me? Like, could that be my saving grace? Um, Cause I had, you know, I had switched my diet and I had started taking these supplements and like, but I just still felt so keyed up was still having like these crazy mind racing thoughts. Um, I felt like I needed to like just run out of my body 24 seven. Like that's wow. the best way I can describe it. Wow. Um, and that was for three and a half years straight where I like, felt like I couldn't even like sit in a chair. Um, so I was taking the supplements and like, I, like some symptoms were getting better, but I still just was so keyed up, revved up. Um, and it wasn't until I met a neuroscientist who specialized in regulating the nervous system. And I did sessions with her and I'm not kidding. It was like my symptoms started to melt away. Um, like I would like wake up and realize like, wait, when's the last time I had an intrusive thought? Or like, why do I not feel super tired? Like it's 10 a.m. Where's the brain fog? Like why hasn't the brain fog hit yet? And like all of these symptoms were just melting away. And once I started to heal, I was like, I like my life is changed and now I need to change other people's lives. Because I was thinking like, if this happened to me, I can't imagine how many moms are going through this or like how many moms, it like breaks my heart to think, but like you hear about all these moms who like, you know, commit suicide or like go off the deep end because like they don't know what's wrong with them and they can't find help. And it's like, I have, I, I have to go back to school. I have to start helping people because I don't want a, a single person to ever feel the way I did. And for as long as I did, like, I want to bring hope to those moms and dads and, you know, anyone who just feels so hopeless because there is hope and you can find ways to heal, but just nervous system regulation is not talked about enough. And I feel like people, I've talked to so many um, like clients who are like, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on supplements and that nothing is helping. And I'm like, did your practitioner work on your nervous system first? And they're like, what? And I'm like, do you think you ha might have like past trauma to work through? And they're like, I've never had like something like major happen to me. I'm like, are there times when you didn't feel safe as a kid? Are there times where, you're, you know, an event happened and you feel like you you weren't able to brush it off. Like those are traumas. Trauma isn't just like you get in a car accident, you know, or something bad happens. It's, right. it's just, it can be everyday things where your body doesn't process it and you don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Golly. All right. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for joining today. The proclivity podcast, <laughs> you just wrapped up uh, the entire proclivity method. So if you guys want to join, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> wow. Like there's so much in there. And I see Emily, Emily shaking her head. I'm shaking my head. I'm just like, yes, we're not the only ones saying this right now. I mean, I literally got off a phone, a phone call earlier, Kate, with someone explaining the exact same thing. I just have these intrusive thoughts and, you know, I get really worked up and I like obsess over this like smallest thing. And I don't know why I can't get rid of it, but I, I just, I got to make sure the plants are watered. What? Mm hmm you know, but so when you water the plants, does it feel better? No, I just get to the next obsessive thing to go to and to go to and recognizing like that is a nervous system 
that is wired up and it's trying to find safety. It's reaching at everything it can to try to find safety and to find that grounding feeling. And it might be, you know, doing this one task or, you know, working through this one thing, but you get done, you're like, nope, don't feel any better. Mm-hmm. And so I'm really curious, you know, our work here is to be able to create safety both in the, the past and the present. Yet you went to a neuroscientist. What'd they do to start regulating your your nervous system? So I want to, oh, I forget the name of the exact technique she does. Um, but she basically taps into the subconscious um, because I like, I know a lot of people will go to therapists and I think therapist therapy is amazing. Talk therapy can be so beneficial to people, but for me personally, like for anxiety, that wasn't doing it. Like me telling my therapist, my problems, like it was something internal, my subconscious needed to be rewired. Um, so she would basically just do sessions, um, where I would like close my eyes and I would visualize things that she was talking about. We would label things as like different colors. Um, We would put them in a drawer. We would throw them into the burning fire. Like it was just so much visual work with my eyes closed. So, um, and it just like, it tapped into my subconscious and something just clicked where like, I I felt safe in my body again. Um, It's like the the coolest experience ever. Um, And like it, it, I've you know, had anxiety for so long, but that was like the key thing to like make it all switch for me. Cause I always heard like, you know, change your diet. It's your gut. The anxiety is in your gut and you know, all these different aspects to change. And, but nobody's, nobody's talking about nervous system regulation like they should. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's like the number one thing practitioners need to, and doctors, honestly, I think a lot of problems would be solved just by regulating the nervous system. Well, maybe all problems, honestly. But Kate, I don't know how many doctors, Western medicine doctors you've met, but I've known a few in my day uh, and dated one and their nervous systems are a wreck, right? They've been going through hard charging eight years of medical school, right? Getting, looking for the gold star, get to the next thing they haven't addressed their traumas or their safety within their body. I mean, when I ran a, a, a CrossFit affiliate, some of the unhealthiest people who'd walk through my door were doctors. They were mm-hmm. so out of whack, you know, using all different stimulants and uppers and downers to get through their days. And so when it comes to Western medicine, that's not, it's not like they have, all right, we're going to spend two years working you guys actually through your past trauma and learning how to tap into the subconscious and be able to create safety and be able to breathe through it and create appropriate language around it. That's, that's not addressed. Right. Emily, I've been seeing you shake your head. (laughs) What what do you got to say? Yeah, I resonate with all of that. (laughs) Um, for me, my my path was very similar in terms of, yeah, all the doctors were like, either you're fine or you have this autoimmune issue or this, this uh, XYZ thing, take this pill for it or just wait it out. And nothing nothing helped or worked. And so if I, eventually I did my own research as well. And I started with the food side of things. And that did help a little bit for sure. Um, but it wasn't until I really started noticing how stressed or how my anxiety was affecting the rest of it. And so with Joel's help, I, we've been working through, you know, some story work and just recognition of like, hey, why do I get upregulated in this um, scenario or triggered by this? And taking the time to slow down, give myself space and grace and to be like, hey, what's going on here? And just unravel it a little bit. And it's been a game changer for my gut health which then affects everything else too. So for me, it's very similar. I agree with you in like nervous system because that affects our brain and our gut. And then they all go out from there. It's beautiful. So I'm curious to touch into, and you know, if we, if we go to your Instagram page, there's a lot of talk about holistic lifestyle. And I think a lot of people in our day and age, they kind of have a grasp on it but I don't know if they really understand it. 
How would you explain a holistic lifestyle? I would say it's going back to the basics. Like how our ancestors lived is how we should live. Um, and I know a lot of people are always like, this is their number one comeback to me is our ancestors were dying at age 30. And I'm like, yeah, thank God for plumbing and clean water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they would have lived till they were 150 if they had the plumbing and clean water. So uh, living a holistic lifestyle, I think a lot of people think, you know, oh, I need to have so much money to live this lifestyle. Not really. Less is more with this lifestyle. Buy, you know, clean foods, um, you know, a water filter, but being mindful of what you're consuming. Like, what are you watching on TV? What are you looking at on the internet? Um, Really just like going back to the basics. Are you spending time outside grounding your feet into the grass daily? You know, are you getting that morning sunlight? Um, These are all things that come to mind when I think of the holistic lifestyle. Um, You know, why are we eating so much packaged food? We should be eating, again, like I said, back to the basics, just kind of like simplifying life as much as possible is like the holistic way for me. Um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of my go around of the definition, just going back to the basics, living how like our ancestors lived essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and then obviously we use a lot of like homeopathy and supplementation instead of, you know, going to Western doctors. Couldn't, I think the last time I went was my six week checkup after I had my son and that was five years ago. So if that tells you anything, oh yeah, um, oh, kind yeah. of had to, was very turned off by them just because if you, I mean, if you can't help me when I'm in, you know, in need, I, I just, I was just a very unsafe time. I felt, um, when I was at my most vulnerable and nobody could give me the answers, but as soon as, you know, I step into the holistic th- side of things, they're like, oh yeah, come on in. Like you're fine. We'll fix you. And they did. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that was the switch of our lifestyle for sure. And, um, it's how my son is being raised. Um, and I just, I think our lifestyle just speaks for itself and how healthy we are, how regulated his nervous system is, all of that. Um, yeah, I think it just speaks for itself. Oh, big time, big time. You know, uh, I saw a quote the other day on Instagram and it said, um, you'll see like Western medicine docs go to Eastern medicine, but you don't see Eastern medicine go into Western medicine. You don't see the ones that are like holistic living. They're like, nope, this stuff just doesn't work. Time to go back to Western medicine. Like you I don't... saw that exactly. <laughs> yes, samesies. It's because we're going to unite at some point, uh, proclivity method and whatever your private practice is going to be. And it's going to be awesome. Yes. That, yes. that says a lot. When I read that, I was like, dang, that's, that's true. Like I, mm-hmm. and even the people like you, me, Emily, Gia, like when, when you go that route, it's not like you're like, ah, no, I actually feel worse. I'm going to go back and pop some pills instead. It's like, right. no, like I feel grounded. I feel me. I feel at peace. I feel centered oh, this is what I'm supposed to feel like? Why would I do it any other way? Yet, why is yeah. it so hard, Kate, for people to to recognize that, right? We're talking about the central nervous system. People are like, oh, I'm not stressed. I just got to get rid of this, you know, vertigo. I just got to get rid of this, like, you know, whatever symptom. I just got to get rid of that. So what do we got to do there? I'm like, cool, tell me about your dad. Tell me about your mom. Why does that matter? Everything, literally everything that it matters. So why is it so hard for people to make that switch? I think a lot of people, we have we are just indoctrinated into thinking like there is one way of living and it is you go to the doctor when you're sick, you get a pill. There is nothing else that will help you. Like, the, And we've just always grown up that way. So it's hard for people to kind of step back and be like, have we been lied to? Have Mm -hmm. we been told the whole truth? Is there another side of things? Mm -hmm. Because naturopathy, um, homeopathy, like that was, that way of living was the mainstream way of living until we created Western medicine and realized, hey, we can make sick patients for the rest of their life. Well, let's completely swipe out 
the holistic, you know, lifestyle that is taboo, that is weird, that is like, you know, witchcraft. And we're just going to make people completely dependent on Western. And it's, it's hard for people to break away from that because it's like, no, no, no. Doctors wouldn't lie to us or, you know, the government wouldn't lie. You know, it's just, it's hard for people to kind of wake up and be like, wait, there, we might not have been told the whole truth. And I get it. I mean, I've been in that position when I like kind of had the, oh my gosh, was my whole life a lie? You know, like, is there actually different ways to heal? And I don't have to feel this way. And I think people are so used to feeling so crappy. They don't even know how good they can feel. Um, And like, especially me, I didn't realize how good I could feel, how clear my mind could be. And once you start to feel that way, it's almost like I, I can't get enough of it. Like I want to just keep striving to be better and better and better. And I think it, especially now that I'm a mom, it's like, I want, I want my nervous system to be regulated so that I can be the best mom I can be and pour into my son in the best way possible. Um, and I think a lot of parents don't even realize how unregulated their nervous system is. But like, I can tell just walking down the store, I can tell if a parent's nervous system is regulated or not. Like if you're screaming at your kid in the store because they're having a meltdown, I'm like, you don't even realize how unregulated you are right now. And you're screaming at your poor child who is unregulated, who needs you to be regulated for them. You know, it's just like, it's just crazy to kind of step back and like see all of this unfold. Mm. Emily? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, 100%. We just did a whole podcast on mom guilt, <clears throat> the subject of mom guilt and tapped into that exact subject of like, okay, well, how can I, instead of me thinking like, oh, what's wrong with him? Why, why is he doing this? It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's take a step back here. What's going on with me? Like, how can I switch my approach or perspective or way of thinking to help him in this situation better? And just doing that alone has been so helpful and taking a lot of pressure off and anxiety and stress off of me. And so I love, I love that you mentioned that because it not only it's a, if you're, even if you're not a parent, or, but if you want to be a parent or if you're dealing with people in general, you have an, that effect on other people. And Joel always says, be the light, right? Instead of, and let the, the darkness always needs a light, not the inverse. And so that's how I see it in terms of if we're regulating our nervous system, not only are we going to be so much healthier, right? it affects everything, but also we're going to attract and help other people that way as, as well. Not only just our kids, but whoever we interact with. So I want to come back to, again, you coming into the subconscious. A lot of people are kind of like, oh, what's really the subconscious? Yet you really, like you said, melted away. Like the anxiety and the stress melted away. How long ago was that when you started doing it? Two years ago, I believe. Okay. Yeah, 2021. And how are you maintaining that? I have, I work with the same neuroscientist I went to. I probably at least once a year, I've probably seen her three times since then. Um, I'll like check in with her. We'll do some more subconscious work. Um, clear anything else that has happened since then, because obviously we're humans, things are always going to come up. It's not like, you know, I I regulate my nervous system and now I'm, you know, good forever. Um, I think it's important to always kind of like maintain that. Um, But also I've just, I've become so self-aware that I can find myself, like if I'm starting to, you know, feel like my nervous system is becoming dysregulated, I can kind of like take a step back and be like, okay, slow down, like, take in your surrounding, um, kind of like ground myself back in. Whereas before I didn't even know that that was a thing, you know, I would just be like, I'm so angry or I'm so, you know, anxious. And I would just let it spiral. But now I can kind of be like, hold on, let's pause, like take it in what's really happening and be like, Oh, my nervous system is dysregulated. You know, I need to bring it back in. So like that breath work, um, and just really being mindful of, what's going on instead of just being like on auto tune. Mm. Would, would you say that like before you really started tapping into this, there was a, um, a disconnect from mind and body? Like, was it, was it hard for you to like connect and like feel like, Oh, I feel this right here. And this is a, this is a sign. This is something going on. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's funny you say that. Cause I was actually thinking about that the other day 
I never realized or I never like thought to pinpoint when I'm feeling anxious. And like for me, it's in my chest. Um, I can just, I can feel it like getting tight. I'll like feel warm, really warm on my chest. Mm -hmm. And that is like a sign for me that I'm like, okay, I need to like slow down and like take a breath or something, you know? Um, And I think that helps to really make myself pause before I like spiral into, you know, full blown anxiety, um, which is really helpful. Have you had any other times where you felt yourself spiral again into anxiety or a panic attack since you've uh, addressed it with the neuroscience? Not a full blown. No. Um, obviously, I mean, obviously my anxiety, anxiety is good in a sense that like, if we're in danger, we should feel anxious and you know, our fight, mm-hmm. fight or flight should kick in, but it's not, no, nowhere near. I don't feel any of those symptoms that I used to feel. Um, which is crazy to think out. Cause I remember I used to literally pray and be like, if I could just have five minutes yes. or even 30 seconds where I don't feel this, like yes. I'm fine. Or like, if I could just, you know, have one normal day out of the rest of my life, like I just, I, I would pray to just feel normalcy so bad. Mm-hmm. And now that I look back, I'm like, I cannot believe that there was a point where I thought I was going to feel like that forever. Yeah. And I truly did. I truly thought mm. that uh, there was just no hope. Gosh. I, I resonate with you a lot and I haven't shared this story. Actually, I don't think I've shared it on our podcast, but when I was just graduating college, I was in a, a relationship that was very unhealthy. Um, and a lot of it had to do with this, the, the woman that I was dating was very similar to my mother and there was unhealed trauma with my mom. And I was just finding that, oh, okay, well, I know that I'm similar to that. Like, I understand that. And, but I knew I didn't want that. But I found myself just coming back in this loop, coming back in this loop, coming back in this loop. And I was drinking a lot to be able to try to manage the anxiety. Yeah, I was gaining weight. I wasn't exercising. And to your exact point, I, I would, I would say at least a year, if not longer, I would wake up every morning and go, Oh, there's that elephant sitting right on my Mm -hmm. chest. And very similar to you, where it was like, I don't want to live this way. I mean, it got you got to very dark times of like, if this is my life, God take me now. I don't want to live this Mm -hmm. way. I don't want to live this, I would pray to get out. And it was very dark, intrusive thoughts, the same same, you know, I don't know what your thoughts were, but it was, it was a really scary time. It was a really scary time. And, uh, it's to get out of that. I had, I started going to therapy, which started allowing me first and foremost, I'm not crazy. A, l- a lot of times that was what people need here. Like, Oh, you're having intrusive thoughts about, you know, death or the world ending or whatever. Okay, you're not crazy. That's actually normal. And you're like, ah, oh, at least for me, I was like, God. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to get locked up in the Looney Tune bin, right, for the rest of my life. You know, that is that was one of my why I didn't tell people the extent of what I was going through is like I was like, if I go to the hospital right now for this panic attack, will they send me away and take my baby? And like that was just like that was just constantly on my mind. So I was like, I can't tell anyone the extent of what I'm going through mm. in fear that they will take my newborn. And it, I, I never told anyone how bad it got until I was on the other side of it. Um, I remember like telling my mom just like, yeah, I, my mom was like, I feel so bad because I didn't, I didn't know. And I was like, it's okay because I didn't tell you because I was so scared of what was going to happen. And I think that's why I'm so passionate about helping other people now. It's because like, I don't want anyone to keep those feelings inside for fear of, you know, their babies being taken away or, Mm -hmm. you know, losing their job or whatever um, it may be. But yeah, that was like a huge turning point for me when I realized, you know, most, a lot of people have these thoughts and feelings, but they're too scared to tell someone for fear of what's going to happen. Absolutely. That was me. Like, I I can't tell people like the thoughts are coming out of like this thing. You know, (laughs) you don't want to get in here. They were for sure going to lock me up and, Mm -hmm. you know, understanding where that was coming from 
an upregulated state, I also was doing, um, I was volunteering for a nonprofit that uh, helped facilitate grief for families who've lost loved ones. So I was done with college and I'm like, well, I want to help out. So here I was like investing all this time and hearing all these stories of death and very vivid. They're explaining it because they were there. Right. And they were explaining these stories. Well, an upregulated state like that, it's going to grab onto something like that and go, cool, let me put it into hyperspeed. So here mm -hmm. now I am having these thoughts of death, right? Death happening to me, to my family, you know, somebody killing me, me killing somebody else. Like this is wacky, wacky tune stuff. But I didn't recognize that, oh, I'm upregulated. And I felt so alone at that time. I felt that there was no hope because I can't come to anybody and say this. I'm the one that's, mm -hmm. that's different. I'm the one that's wrong. I'm the one not recognizing now being in this field for a very long time. This is a lot of us are going through these things that we feel guilty or we feel shame about it. And I don't want to tell mm -hmm. anybody about it. And that's exactly where the devil wants to keep you is cool. Stay in the darkness. So you won't recognize mm -hmm. there's a light out. And I just kudos to you, Kate, for going through that hard time. I resonate. I haven't really like connected with somebody like that. Um, but hearing your story really brings me back to that time of feeling like I'm all alone here and there's, there's right. nothing I can do. The amount of people, cause I, I, so I have my Instagram account and I, posted a pin post of just my story. Cause everyone's like, why are you doing this? Why do you care? So I just, I like wrote it out and posted it for millions of people to see the amount of people who DM'd me and were like, ah, oh my gosh, I've never heard someone talk about that before. I thought I was crazy. Like hundreds and hundreds of people have reached out and been like, I feel those exact same things, but I was too scared to tell anyone. Yeah. Like, what can I do? I've, you know, I've, I've tried all the supplements. I've tried all the eating healthy. And while that helps to an extent, like I still feel so keyed up, revved up, intrusive thoughts. And I'm like, have you worked on your nervous system? And it's just like a light that goes off in people when they do then reach out to, you know, the person I've worked with or other people that can help regulate your nervous system. And they're like, I truly thought I was stuck that way for the rest of my life. Mm. And like, you've changed my life because you pointed me in the right direction of who can help me. And it's just, it's awesome to, you know, turn your pain into your purpose and help other people. Um, even if they don't work directly with me, I don't care. As long as people feel better, like that's, it's just such a good feeling to know that like you helped, you know, potentially save someone's life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause you went from the hell to the heaven and, and you mm -hmm. know what it feels like, you know, what the depths of the darkness feels like. And you also know what mm -hmm. the top of the mountain feels like. And that drives incredible passion, which is something both for Emily and I, why we're so passionate. You know, there was dark times for Emily. There was dark times for me. And, you know, to have somebody else here being able to, one, you guys recognize that you are not alone. And we're here to help. Whether it's with Kate or Emily or myself, we're here to be able to help you. You are not alone. And you don't have to do this by yourself. Whatever you're feeling, it's okay. And there's somebody to help. One of the most courageous things that anyone can say is help. And so if you need it, ask for it. If you need it, ask for it. Emily, I don't, I've never asked you this. I don't believe so. But did you have intrusive thoughts when, when you were going through this, this, this tough time or after pregnancy or anything like that? Um, there were definitely, there were times when I had all my gut issues. So I had a laundry list of, of symptoms where my pain or my legs were chronically in pain. I was chronically bloated. Um, I wasn't able to work out. I had kidney stones, seizures, like all these random weird things. And yeah, I felt the the thoughts of like, is this how I'm going to live the rest of my life? Like, this is not okay. I, I don't know what to do. And so similar thoughts in terms of hopelessness. 
um, and feeling super alone because I'd go to family events and try and eat my certain way to, to do what I thought was going to help. And they would question me about it. And that would be a trigger into an anxiety attack and be like, they just don't understand. And then that would just, it would spiral from there. And so I had, yeah, similar intrusive thoughts there. And then I could feel myself getting back into it in pregnancy in terms of like, well, pregnancy is hard <laughs> in and of itself, right? And and I, when you t- said thinking about labor, that was really tough for me of like, how do I prepare for this? You know, like, and I knew I was like in my head, I was like, there's stuff that I know is like in my subconscious that I need to let go of if I want to have a smooth birth. And so I would worry about that a lot. Um, but again, just as you said as well, it's that awareness that has kept me to slow, take a deep breath, slow down. Do I need to just slow down in the moment or do I need to shift my whole day or my whole week? Or do I need to quit something or delegate it or just not do something right in my day to help slow down moving forward in that awareness and that piece has helped so much, um, into where now I do not have those. And because I don't have that pain, Mm -hmm. but yet I think of people who may have chronic pain, but don't realize it. Like you mentioned Kate before, where it's like, well, that just becomes their new normal for a lot of people. Cause maybe it's not to the rock bottom point, but maybe they're having Mm -hmm. gut issues or maybe they're um, having acid reflux or a rash is popping up on their skin. That these symptoms are signs of chronic health issues. And usually again, stems back to our, our nervous system dysregulation. Maybe it is partially food too, Usually we, we, it's both. Um, and that's why we teach both, but it's like, Hey, this is your new normal. And I'm just like, we love showing people how you can feel like, what is your hundred percent? And so that's why we love doing our 12 week program because we give them a taste of that. They have a few, at least a few days, if not like soon and immediate of like, Whoa, I didn't know I could feel like this. And so if you're like, eh, you know, I'm, I'm running along. Okay. Like everyone's busy. Everyone has low energy. Everyone has some stomach issues, Right. Yes, that's quote unquote normal, but it's, uh, or common, excuse me, quote unquote common, but not normal. And so I wanted to give a shout out to those people too, because it's, and then I'm sure with you guys too, you maybe fall back into certain symptoms and that's where that awareness comes back in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great point, Emily. This has been great. I've really enjoyed this. I could do this for a very long time. (laughs) Yet what I, what I want to do here, Kate, is I I want you to bring yourself back to that moment where you felt really hopeless. Um, You were going through all that pain. And you had to figure it out the hard way. Like there was a there was a difficulty that you had to, to move through. But you figured a lot of these things out. So I want you to speak to a mother or maybe soon to be mother who is feeling the same way you were feeling, what would be the things that you would say to them and suggest that they do? Yeah. So first off, if you're feeling that way or like this podcast episode resonates with you, I am so sorry, but I also want you to know that there is so much hope. Like, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, um, 100%. Like you, you aren't stuck this way. There are so many different tools you can use. Um, and if one thing doesn't work, the next thing can. Um, and if you feel like you've exhausted all your options, there's still so many more options that you haven't heard of. Um, and if you, I think my number one thing is we have to ner- we have to regulate the nervous system. Like if you have, you know, I think a lot of moms will say like, I have chronic fatigue and I have, um, you know, I can't sleep at night. I have insomnia and, you know, I have all these symptoms. It's like, I would start with regulating your nervous system before you spend a bunch of money on all of these supplements, all of these different things that you can implement. Because once the nervous system is regulated, your body's going to be able to start healing, but we can't heal when we're in a state of chronic fight or flight. It just, it's not possible. Um, and I think that's why a lot of, you know, moms feel hopeless sometimes because they're like, I took the medicine. I, I did the supplements. I, you know, I did the intermittent fasting. They, you know, they exhaust all their options, but if we can just go back to the basics of getting the nervous system on a regulated level, it can literally change your life and it will change your life. Um, and I, yeah, I just, I 
go always go back to like, there is so much hope for you. Um, mm -hmm. You are not stuck. You don't have to live a life of, you know, feeling like you'll never be normal again or feeling like you're just surviving the day. Like you can, you can absolutely thrive as a mom. Mm. I love that message. It resonates uh, a lot uh, with me in, in terms of uh, the different moms I've worked with. So thank you for, for saying that. I know if there's a mom listening, they definitely leaned in right there and they're probably going, okay, well, Kate, what do I do next? What would you say for them to do? Is it, I mean, and we like giving people tactful things because it's like, cool, we can be very subjective and kind of look at things and, you know, give you some kind of information. But what's something ob objectable that we can give like, hey, do do these three things. When it, and I know that there's tons of them. But what would yeah. be like the three things you would say to a, a mom who just leaned in and went, thank you for saying that. That is me. Now, what can I do? Okay. First, my first option would be obviously find find someone who specializes in this. So someone, whether it be a practitioner um, or someone like Joel and Emily, like just lean into someone who knows of this type of work. If you're like, I don't, I can't afford that right now. The number one thing I would do is when you wake up in the morning, do not just get on your phone and scroll. I would wake up. I would get your eyes in the sunlight, walk outside, even if you look crazy in your pajamas, get your feet grounded into the grass because I feel like the number one thing that helps me as a mom and to like stay regulated is getting my feet and my eyes out into the grass and the sun every morning without touching my phone first. I think people don't realize the small things can help so much. Um, another thing that I would do is if you're someone, if you're a mom – I know most moms survive on coffee. If you could just eat breakfast in the morning before you put coffee into your body, before you get that caffeine into your body on an empty stomach, and then you start feeling revved up or, you know, the brain fog starts to come in. If you could eat a breakfast that is like high in proteins and fats and some carbs, I feel like that makes a world of a difference before having your coffee. Um, not saying like cut it out completely because I know a lot of moms like really just enjoy their coffee in general. Um, if you could like start with those two things alone, I feel like your life could potentially change. Um, and then my third one is if you feel yourself becoming like short with your kids or, you know, like you feel like your day is just, you're on, you're completely wired up and you can't calm down. I would say, take a second, take a step back before you react to situations and just like bring yourself back into your own body before you try to solve a different problem for your kids or for your coworkers or whatever the situation is. I feel like those three things alone can just like completely change the trajectory of your days. Mm. Love that. Love the simplicity. This, yeah, Simple and easy are not the same thing. We say that quite often. People are like, well, what do I got to do? Cool. We need you to drink some more water with some electrolytes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally, I got that. But like, what supplement, what else? No, 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 no. Right. I don't think you heard me. I need you to show me for 90 days that you can drink enough water with enough electrolytes and then I'll give you what's next. Yeah, you know? exactly. It really is the simple things that people just completely overlook. And I, I think it's almost because I was the same way. Like I was like, okay, but what supplement can I take next? What can, like, what can I add in? What can I do more of? And it's almost like, what can you do less of? Mm -hmm. Like, what can you just simplify um, before adding in all these next things? But I also think it goes back to like, I was, I was so dependent on like, okay, the next supplement is going to help me or the next thing, because it wasn't the inner work I had to do. I could put it on someone else. Someone else is giving me the supplement, but it takes a lot of courage to step back and be like, I have to do the inner work and I have to heal. Mm -hmm. Um, I think a lot of people find comfort in waiting for their doctor to give them the next thing or their practitioner to give them the next thing when it's really, it's, it's the inside you who needs to start and heal first. Amen, sister. <laughs> Gosh. And she is listening right now and just getting clips after clips after clips. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is great. Um, Emily, any, any other touch points or questions for, for Kate? I mean, she has covered 
a vast and mm -hmm. it feels so good to me. I don't know about you. Cause I'm like, we didn't say it. You guys, I know you've heard us say it, but now Kate crunchy Kate saying it. And if you don't believe us, <laughs> you're going to believe crunchy Kate. Yes. 100%. Yeah. You touched the, the most important parts to us, but I am a big fan of looking at ingredient lists too. So if anyone looks at crunchy Kate's Instagram, you'll see so many good resources of <clears throat> products and trusty brands. I call them trusty brands. Um, of like what chip is a better option in terms of the ingredients. And so I would love to ask you, what are, if you had to pick the top two or three ingredients, what are the first ones that you look for to avoid? Okay. Yeah. Love this question. This is, I get this question all the time and I love it because I, it's a lot easier for people than they actually think. So if I were to go grab a bag of something at the store right now, I'd flip it over and I would see one, does it have food dyes in it? Food dyes are the easiest thing to spot out because they literally say a color. So if you know your colors, you know if something has food dyes in it. It's like like I could have my, you know, I could have my five-year-old pick out the colors. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next thing is seed oils. And those can be a little bit more confusing. But this is so important because I feel like I look back at pictures on myself and I'm like, I cannot believe how inflamed I used to be from eating seed oils. Like it's literally insane. Um, so seed oils is my next one. So like sunflower oil, safflower oil, cotton seed oil, um, canola oil. Basically, if it just has, if, if it has oils in it, you want it to be either like olive oil, avocado oil, like tallow, um, those, those sorts of things, beef tallow. Um, yeah, those are like the, and that's what I focus mainly on my page because I feel like when you get on the internet, you're just getting so much information. It's constantly coming in. Look for this, look for this, look for this. And my page is mainly like, okay, let's just simplify it and look for these two things. Like if you're just starting out, if you can eliminate food dyes and seed oils, you're going to feel so much better alone just on that. And then we can dive into more, you know, complicated things like look out for the artificial sugars and mm -hmm. the artificial um, flavorings, that type of stuff. But if you can cut out seed oils and food dyes, you are on the right path. Agreed. Thank you. <laughs> you just made, you made Emily's day for sure. <laughs> She's going to be talking about the rest of the day. This is great. <laughs> it does help to have someone else agree with us <laughs> and from right. a different point of view. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, coming from the, uh, a similar experience where you were able to put it into your own hands, right? We talk a lot internal to external, internal to external. What? Nope. I don't care what's happening out here. What can I do in here? And the more that we focus inside, the more that we can change the reality around us. And too often we're, we're, we allow ourselves to fall into a victim mentality that all these different things, I can't do it because of, you know, the, the, the pandemic, the, just the way the food and agricultural is, I it's just, there's no way we can even be healthy these days. It's like, whoa, we're going to allow ourselves to just go to that point. That's when I know we're that person is living in an external to internal world. They're allowing the external influences to affect the internal self. And a lot of this stuff, you guys, what Kate's talking about, what Emily's talking about, what I've talked about is make it more simple so that you can start building that internal where you can go, this is simple. Wait, I have more control. And I have more control. I can make, I can make another decision and another decision. And before you know it, you start feeling a lot better and you go, whoa, it didn't actually matter what was happening out here. I'm feeling, I'm feeling better because I've created those decisions. Whew. For sure. Kate, anything else you, uh, you want to touch on? You know, I feel like we just covered a lot of ground yeah, we did. <laughs> at once. I feel like we really just hit it from all angles. Yeah, we did. Uh, I, I don't think so. I mean, I just think my, like the one thing I want, if, People are coming into this podcast episode. I just want the and like feeling hopeless. I just want them to know that there is so much hope for you. Mm -hmm. Like if you are feeling like this is it, like this is the end of the road, it's not. Um, there is just so much you can do. And I hope we gave like some good tools for people to feel like, okay, like I can do this. Like there's, you know, I can, I can set a plan and get from point A to point B now. Um, I just like really hope that that is the message that, can come across done we'll put it on the the uh episode title 
finding finding there hope with Crunchy Kate. <laughs> People are like Crunchy Kate, what's happening here? They'll definitely tune yeah, in. What? Definitely so in. many people message me and they're like, what does crunchy mean? <laughs> just, let me, let me it's tell just you. A saying. Let me tell you. It's living like our <laughs> ancestors. Okay. Right. That's, literally. That's what it's all about. All right. Kate, if people are listening to you and they feel inspired and they want to get in contact with you, how do they get in contact with you? So I am most active on Instagram. Um, I do TikTok as well, but Instagram, if you send me a message, I'll always see it there or you can email me. So my Instagram and TikTok are the same. It's that crunchy mom, Kate. And then my email people can reach me at is that crunchy mom, Kate at Gmail. There it is. Crunchy mom, Kate. What a great name. Out. Right. I know. I remember when I made the Instagram handle, I wasn't even like thinking like, oh, this is going to blow up. I was just like thought of it one day and I was like, that's a good one. I'm just going to start an Instagram handle now. And then it's like, now I'm here. <laughs> here you are. It's, it a, worked it's out. a little things. It's a little things. Awesome. Right? Awesome. Well, Kate, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Thank you for um, your inspiration. Um, thank you for your knowledge. It's been an, an incredible um, podcast, and I knew when we first talked to you, like, wow, this, you are probably one of the most aligned guests that we've had on what we do. So we really appreciate that you're out in the world and you're doing what you're doing. It means a lot to us. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. I was so excited when you guys reached out and we were having our like initial call, and I was just like, we are like the same. We are the same people, just very far apart in state. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. We got to we got to stay spread out. That's how we affect. We can't be all in one spot. We got to spread everybody out. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. We, we got to spread the word all over. That's awesome. Yeah, and I, uh, I was going to add. Let us know when you have uh, when you're able to accept some clients because you, you're a great resource for some of our clients as well. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely will. Oh yeah. We, we will hammer you with clients. Just be ready for that. Yeah, good. Send them my way. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes, yes, we will. Yes, we will. All right, you guys, thank you so much again, always for joining us. It means the world to Emily and I that, that you put your trust in us. And so we look forward to having you next week. Episode 124 is in the book, Finding Hope with Crunchy Kate. We're locking it in. There it is. Until next time, you guys, as always, best day ever. Best day ever. I have a question. Yes. Should I ask her one of the questions I asked you, Emily? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, I should. I should. I should. Unless you have a really good question. Actually, why don't you ask the question? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't have a good one. Come on, give me one. Just toss one out there. Oh my God. Well, he asked a good question the other day. He's like, would you rather not have pain the rest of your life or would you rather not get sick the rest of your life? But they're like one in the same. Am I having it chronically? Am I, am I chronically one of them for forever? Mm, no. You, yeah. So um, you'd never either you'd never feel pain. So like you'd never have like a tweak knee or back or you know your spleen or whatever or sick. So like any type of sickness. I know that sickness and pain can kind of be the same. No sickness for sure. No brainer. No brainer. Man. Good old Kate. Crunchy Kate likes going into the pain cave. <laughs> What's the hardest thing you've ever done outside of pregnancy? Surviving what I went through. Okay. Outside of that. That was hard. Outside of that. That's true. Okay. I understand that. What's the hardest thing you've done? Uh, probably switching my entire lifestyle because with that comes a lot of loss, whether that like friendships. Um, it's almost like you're saying goodbye to your old self, essentially. And I don't want to be my old self, but it's like I am a completely different person. Um, and it was the scariest thing ever, but I, it's also the best thing ever. Um, but like, I, I think back to before I came a mom and I'm like, wow, I've like, I'm not friends with a lot of people that I used to be. I used to like go out all the time and like my life has just completely changed to the point where I'm like, 
if people knew me four years ago, they have no idea who I am now just because I'm so different, if that makes sense. Oh, so yeah. it's almost like I kind of gave up, gave up my old self and I'm happy about it, but it was the hardest thing I've ever done. It really took me out of my like comfort zone. Mm. Yes. I can resonate with that. I used to throw down a lot of beers. I used to throw down a lot of beers. Don't drink anymore. Same. Do you, do you say, what was your drink of choice in college? Go to. Bud Light. Coors Light. Bud Light. Coors Light. Coors Light. <laughs> Emily, did you even drink in college or have you ever drank before? <laughs> I barely did. Well, I went through all my health issues in college, so it was tough. I went through a, my freshman year. I would, well, <laughs> I would drink um, just like vodka sodas, basically. Like, what are the Red Bulls? Now looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah that, was, that was a good time. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mm. Well, <laughs> that was good. <laughs>